People are afraid of what they don't know. And a lot of people don't know gay people. We're just normal people, you know. We just have two kids and we're just like you. We would just, you know, get up and go to work and go to the store and, you know, cook dinner and go to bed, put the kids to bed and watch some TV and then go to bed. I mean, that's our routine, the normal life. can marry on the state level, immigration is a federal issue and it's a federal benefit and people who can get married in a state, those marriages are not recognized by our government. I'm Nadine, I am born and raised in Germany and I moved to the US about nine years ago and I'm leaving the country tomorrow after nine years because my American partner cannot sponsor me for an immigration visa. I graduated in May and then am now on what's called OPT. I'm required to find work within three months. So that means if you don't find a job within 90 days, that OPT visa expires and you're, you're forced to leave the country. I'm not, I'm, I'm not really fully in touch with the reality of the situation. I don't know, it's just hard to see the person that you love and you can't do anything about it. And I think that's what uh, gets me the most. <laughs> yeah. Because we don't have gay marriage, a gay couple or a lesbian couple uh, are not married and therefore cannot, if, if one is a foreigner, cannot sponsor that person to come to this country under the immigration law. And you get a situation where two partners, two lovers are kept apart. And that is cruel. And it's gratuitously cruel. And by gratuitously cruel, I mean cruel for no rational or necessary purpose. We know from the 2000 census that approximately 36,000 LGBT binational couples were living in the United States. Some of those couples are in immediate jeopardy. Some of those couples have some solutions that they've been able to work out. But it's a lot of gay people to be really suffering only because they're lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender. No, 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 no. I'm Kirsten Helma. I'm originally from Germany. And I'm Wendy. I'm originally from Virginia. So I'm really worried that like ne next year when I will have to reapply for my visa, if they ask me, so do you ever want to go back? You know, you've been here for five years. Mm -hmm. You're still here. Why you know, are you still just, a student? <laughs> do you really plan on going back? So I hope that that will not happen, but who knows? Because we still have a, a kid that we need to finish high school with. Uh, he's in ninth grade right now. I do worry. Um, sometimes I feel like our family's gonna get split apart in the future. And that scares me because we're really close right now. And yeah, I can't imagine what it would be like if my mom had to go back to Germany. I think it would be just like chaos, be hell. People are like scared of us, like we're some big bad monster. And I mean, we're just like a family of love. An overwhelming number of same-sex binational couples are raising young children in their home. 46% overall had, at the time of the census, a child under 18 uh, that they were raising. And I think that what that speaks to is that the, the binational couples that are really fighting to stay together have pursued their relationships against very long odds. They're not fly-by-night relationships. They're really committed, loving couples that have been together a long time, that are sharing their lives together, that are raising their children together, and all they want is to be able to stay together in the United States and, and be an American family. I understand the question of why do you want to stay in the U.S., but if anyone else were asked that question, it would be like, what do you mean? This is my country. Why do I want to stay here? It's my country. I have been here nine years, and so I had to go through every single thing that is my life in the United States and try and reduce it to two suitcases that I can take on an airplane. 
And that process emotionally was very hard for me because it's also, you, you, I mean, you're holding more than just an object. You're holding memories, you're holding your life in the U.S., you're holding people that have given a certain thing to you. So it's like very emotionally hard to sit there and have to make a choice about, you know, what am I taking with me and what am I letting go of? Simply, if one of us was a man, we would be getting married and we would... I would have a green card based on that, and we cannot even get married. We cannot actually marry because they're going to take my visa away and kick me out of the U.S. if we do that. The horrible irony is that we discourage people from, uh, from marrying or, or from doing anything else to really evidence their relationship because most visa categories require that you not have any evidence of immigrant intent, meaning you don't show that you intend to stay in the U.S. permanently. And your marriage to a U.S. citizen partner is pretty good evidence that you intend to stay in the United States permanently, even if you don't. It's interesting because immigration reform is not even asking for gay marriage, right? So it's not even a marriage issue. So I'm not saying I want the right to marry Nadine. I'm saying as an American, I want the right to sponsor my spouse or my partner, whatever legal jargon they want to use, that's fine, go ahead, use it. There's several bills now that are include our families. There's the Uniting American Families Act, which would allow gays and lesbians to sponsor our partners for immigration the way straight people can. What the Uniting American Families Act does is it defines a permanent partner. And the permanent partner is defined as two individuals at least 18 years of age in a committed relationship, intending a lifelong commitment, financially interdependent, and unable legally unable to enter into a marriage with each other. And then every place in the Immigration and Nationality Act where the word spouse appears adds the phrase or permanent partner. But the bill that's going to move this year is comprehensive immigration reform and we're fighting to get the United American Families Act and our families into that bill because comprehensive immigration reform is not comprehensive if it leaves out our families. And comprehensive immigration reform happens about every 20 years. If we're not included, we'll be left behind for a whole generation. We can't wait. Um, for inevitable progress. You have to force it as fast as possible so people don't suffer from the lack of it, so people don't suffer from the inequality. Families that call Immigration Equality's office every day, they are suffering now. They need help right now. feel about what you're about to do? It's really hard for me to do. I mean, I didn't necessarily make this choice. And so it's really hard to be doing this. It's very bizarre. It feels totally surreal. You know, I've been here for nine years. So at this point, I'm like, I don't know. I feel very sort of confused. I mean, the discrimination part of it is hard to swallow because it is, it's true that if I was in a heterosexual relationship, we would not have gone through any of this for a single day. We would have not gone through the tears, through the worry, through the anxiety. It becomes so frustrating when you have to live your relationship around laws and around holds and laws that simply don't cover you because you're not a category that actually exists. What did you write on that poster? Law should not divide love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, law should not divide law love. Law should not divide love. Never, ever.